expecting more love than that. <laughs> one of the youngest comics ever to do The Tonight Show. I believe you were like 21, right? Back in the day, day. And he shifted his career into being a, an amazing director. In fact, he directed the, the uh, uh, Comedy Store documentary series that was on Showtime last year. He directed it. Come on now. So many amazing, like, good to the fucking point, Felicia. So many amazing uh, movies. Give it up for Mr. Mike Binder. Hello, how are you? This is great. Wow, I can't even believe this. This is like a flat. I, I haven't done this in 28 years. And um, Alan just said to me, no, it's like riding a bike. I go, yeah, that's what Joe Biden said. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know about that. I was thinking about it because, God, I was just a kid here, you know? I was just a kid, you know? You know, I'm an old man, you know, but I like it. I'm, I'm 64. I just turned 64. But I heard 64 is the new 63. So, so I feel pretty okay. I'm not, I'm not really freaking out about getting old. You know you're old, though, when you're on the beach and you're checking out houses. <laughs> Look at the front porch on that one. I would... I'm gonna turn that one over so fast. <laughs> All the great ass on the planet laid on the beach like resting seals and you're looking at real estate. You're fucking old. <laughs> I, uh, this room, I actually, this is, it's funny to be in this room because I remember this room when it opened, the night it opened. I don't know if you guys know, this used to be just women. This was a women-only room. Mm -hmm. oh. We used to call it Cunt Castle. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's me. And, 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 and then when we get spots up here, finally, we go, were well, you in the main room? No, you in the original? No, I got a storm Cunt Castle. <laughs> but it was great. It, was, it became a great room. It really did. It was, this place was an amazing place, you know? And, and I just, uh, God, I had so many friends here. I go, I am. Um, I gotta tell you, I, I got sober here. I, I was, I'm 38 years sober. Yeah. And the reason is, the last night I ever got loaded, I was drunk. Alan's here. I got, I was drunk, and I was standing on that little wall, half wall in front of the bar there, and I thought I'd show off to my friends. And these cops drove by, and I pulled my pants down and moved them. And then a jump cut, I was handcuffed in the back of the car, driving to the West Hollywood Police Station. It's a true story. There was a, a, a I was in a big holding cell center, a holding cell, yeah, with just me and a drag queen. That's what we called them back then. We didn't have sophisticated terms like transvestite or trans, even transgender. We just we called him, and I, and I thought, okay, this is funny. I'll do a bit with this guy. Hey, why do they call you guys drag queens? Did you get a Buick with that dress? <laughs> and he got up in another jump cut, came over and beat the fuck out of him. <laughs> and when he was done, he sat back on the bench, and he went, you just got beat up by a man dressed like a woman. <laughs> and Mitzi... Here's another thing. I don't know, you guys know who Mitzi is? Mitzi Shore, the only cowboy store? Yeah. She picked me up in the middle of the night. She came and bailed me out. 4.30 in the morning by herself. It was really sweet, you know? And she didn't want me to spend the night in jail. And, and then she found out about the drag queen joke. She said, Mike, you got... She lectured me all the way back to my house. Mike, you got to have empathy. <laughs> Somebody that would dress like that is doing it because it's important to them. Have empathy. And I was thinking, you know, drunk. I'm going to get sober. I told her, I said, Mitzi, I'm going to get sober. She goes, yeah, well, take self-defense, too. <laughs> 
Because I don't care how sober you get, Mike, you're still going to shoot your mouth off. It's so good, it's so, right? It's so good to be back here, and this is.